Hi everyone. So I wasn't planning on doing a reading at all, but I keep getting this message about a trilogy, that there's a trilogy of some sort. And the longer I sat with that message, the more I felt like there was actually four parts to it. So there's a prequel, the main show, I guess, and the sequel and the trilogy. Now, I have no idea what area of life this is about, but I figured I might as well record this reading. I'm just going to read on it anyways to find out what Spirit's talking about. So let's do it together. Let's find out what's going on. I'm going to use a couple different decks here. Uh, pull four cards and see what's up. What's up with the trilogy, Spirit? What do you want to talk about when it comes to the trilogy? I'm getting the word unanimous, like there's some kind of you, but I'm hearing um, like unanimity. Is that the word? <laughs> okay, unanimous. There's a unanimous. I'm hearing calamity. Calamity. Okay. Let's find out what's going on, Spirit. So this could be a message for the collective, about the collective, or it could be for you personally. It's probably a bit of both. So I'm going to pull out four cards, and I'll keep them face down, and we'll go through it together. Okay, so let's get the main, the main event first. I feel this card. Okay, and let's get... The trilogy. Interesting how it's kind of out of order. Something about timelines here. The sequel. And we need the prequel. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get some more cards. Let's layer up. I'm hearing something like um, Choose Your Own Adventure. Remember those books? So maybe there's some timelines opening up for you or for the collective. We're at a pivotal moment. I don't even know where we are in this reading. Are we at the prequel, sequel, trilogy, or the main event? I'm not sure. The Spirit's telling me to put the main event in line. I had it up here at first, but something about it needing to be in line. Something's in line. There's a uniformity here. Uniformity. Interesting. I'm getting reminded of an old username I used to have, like when I was 20 or 22, uh, which was uniformed, uniformed image. It was funny because when everybody saw it, they thought it said their first, their first um, interpretation, I guess, was uninformed image. And I always just say, no, it's uniformed. I don't even know where I got that name from or why I was using that. But there's something here about <laughs> maybe the uniformed image or the unanimous decision this could be between two people, I guess, or maybe more, or three people, however many, a, a large collective. But there's something about the unanimous perspective or agreement being uninformed. All right. I'm also feeling like these stones are should be placed above the different... I mean, we're not doing a pick a card. Okay, where do we, the main event is where we're gonna start. Yeah, let's start with the main event, which we have the obsidian for. So the obsidian's about protection, can also absorb negative energies. So let's see, what's the main event? The empty room. This card talks about a moment in time when any, anything can happen. The universe is full of potential. So this could be talking about a situation that you're currently in. 
where something's been cleared out of the room to bring new energy in. Whatever happens right now, it's entirely up to you. There's going to be some kind of sh change, shift. Some kind of shift or change here. Every time I want to say change, I'm getting shift. So, which I don't understand the difference really, but okay. Well, I guess words matter, right? Words matter. That's another message there. Um, but there's going to be some kind of shift in the energy or in a certain situation or even in a particular place. What was uniform before or uninformed or collectively unanimously decided, <laughs> I don't know, is, is being cleared out. Creativity with the Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, it's entirely up to you how you want this main event to feel, to accomplish. What What is it that you want to create at this time? Are we in the main event? Oh, that's what the crystals are for. Okay. Are we over here in the prequel? No. <laughs> are we in the main event? I feel like we're in the sequel, maybe, in between the main event and the sequel. Yeah, we're definitely not at the trilogy yet. I'm going by, like, the warmth that each crystal is giving me. Okay, so we're in between, or maybe it's different for each of us, but we're on the timeline here where we're at the main event or at the sequel. So the main event, how you want it to go down, what you want this to look like, what you want this to be is entirely up to you and your own imagination or whatever you want to create can happen at this time. But Spirit is saying that make sure what, that whatever it is you want to happen at this time as the sort of main event, that it comes from your highest self. Okay, see that? I don't know if you see all those little dots there. You're meant to spread your wings here with something, to take a risk, to fly, to experience freedom. But the choices you make are critical. You have to make them for the highest good of all, of everyone involved. And this is important karmically, for your own karmic well-being, <laughs> okay? There's something also outside of the box that you haven't considered that you could do in this particular situation to make things unfold the way that you see them. Can we get a little bit more here? Hearing something about uh, record, I just saw 811, recording messages. Maybe you want to record your own messages to yourself or something like that. Recording messages. There's some kind of event log I'm feeling. Okay, Knight of Pentacles. There's a lot of energy here coming in. Look at this. Okay, now we're getting interesting here. Because see this, it looks like a falcon maybe to me. It has one of those hoods on. And here somebody's shooting at it and it cannot see that, right? So there's something about having to trust your instincts about when to take off, when to fly. Because somebody here, well, what, let's find out what is the Knight of Pentacles intentions here? Knight of Swords. I don't think this is for everyone, but I'm hearing pin you down. Okay, so it's like, maybe that's a metaphor, you know, I, hopefully. <laughs> Somebody wants to pin you down to have a conversation with you. They're ready to be honest here. See how he's taking the sword out of the sheath here? If somebody's ready to be honest. And it feels like it's taken a while for this person to be honest. The, the decay here on the horse or the skeleton. Even though they've wanted to for a long time, it oh, this message is taking a strange turn here, Hermit. Let me see what's happening. Eight of 
It's like the moment you're about to fly and spread your wings, that's when this person decides to communicate something. And this, again, could be for the collective, on a collective scale. So what is, how does the empty room relate to this? That you wouldn't be able to really, what is the empty room? How would you get away in a room? Seven of swords. The empty room and illusion. Yes, the magician and the six of wands. The empty room is a an illusion, an illusion. Okay, whoa, why did I say that twice? Something about doubling here. Okay, let me break down what I'm feeling. <laughs> Metaphorically, or maybe actually, I don't know. Metaphorically, there is an empty room. Something has been cleared out. The energy has shifted. It's up to you what you want to do now with this energy and it's like you're thinking huh I have all this potential space I'm going to fill it up with what I want to fill it up with it's up to me how I want this to all look now but spirit saying oh my goodness Spirit's saying that there's a container around the situation. Um, that you sense, but you can't see, but it's an illusion. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't really go about this any other way. I just got to figure it out with you. Sometimes when I watch my own readings back that are like this, I'm like, how do they have the patience to figure this out with me? <laughs> it's like, just tell me what the message is. <laughs> okay. It is what it is, right? I am who I am. And those are also messages there for you too. Okay. So I'm, I was, as I was talking about that, I was seeing a theater and this feels very theater-esque because we have the main attraction, right? The sequel, the trilogy, the prequel. So it's like you're in a theater and I'm seeing this bird flying on a screen and it like flies off the screen and you're watching this movie and it's an illusion that it's flown away somewhere because you're in a theater. The bird hasn't really gone anywhere. Oh boy. Something's 2D. Something's in the 2D. Two-dimensional. Maybe this is communication on a phone here or information coming towards you. It's flat. It's 2D. Okay, so that's what's going on now. It seems like... Why is the theater an illusion? Page of Cups. Somebody's creating some idea about a situation you're involved in that it's contained or that it's stuck in time or that you're um, not able to escape it but you can and it's like you're beginning to realize that that you can escape it right because it's not even real but somebody's wanted to create some kind of agenda, I'm hearing, a facade uh, so that they could pin you down, contain, like uh, get you in their crosshairs, you know, have you in a certain place so they could deliver a certain message. Okay, let's, well, this is kind of, I don't know what the feelings are around this. It feels kind of empty, to be honest. Sometimes when I read, most of the times, I get feelings. Like, I feel the intentions behind certain cards. And here it's kind of like... Vapid, I'm hearing. There's a void. It feels meh, like it's... Um, lacks substance in some way. I feel like 
this is maybe somebody's fantasy or dream or something they've concocted in the 5D. I'm hearing don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Okay, the sequel. No, I'm hearing go to the prequel. Okay, the prequel. We have the bridge. So this is what happened in the past. The energy is leading up to this moment. The bridge, isolation. Queen of Cups, wow. Somebody made a connection with you at a time where you felt isolated. Emotionally, I, I'm hearing fragile, uh, emotionally isolated. Yeah. I feel like that happened on in a literal way on the 3D, maybe on the 2D. Take that however that, you know, maybe up through the internet or something like that. Okay, but somebody made some connection here with you some person and then I also feel like at the same time spirit was making a connection with you pulling you into something yes pulling you into the main event for a particular reason what's the reason page of cups the hermit for you to unlock some kind of I'm hearing creative genius within you or maybe some frequency of love Six of Pentacles to you for you to give Eight of Swords, Knight of Wands. For you to receive the tools you needed to break you from some kind of mental bind you were in. So in the past, you were in some kind of situation where you felt isolated, you felt alone. Okay, somebody reached out to you or you connected with someone at that time and it's taken to you to where you are now. And also what was going on behind the scenes is that spirit was seeing that you were feeling isolated. Maybe depression for some of you. And a path, a timeline opened up, a path opened up for you to step into this present moment of the event, the now, I'm hearing the now moment. And gain the tools you need. To find your way out of your own mental chaos or your own mental mess, I'm hearing. The high priestess. Yeah, it's like you needed to be shown something or you needed to experience something so that you could, or maybe this is coming up for you. I don't know. Um, for you to unlock some power here. Gain some wisdom. It's interesting though because the prequel usually is released you know when we see it in the in I'm hearing showtime <laughs> in the movies <laughs> um, the prequel usually comes like after the trilogy so maybe this is cyclical or it has a circular kind of nature it's a cycle of some sort let's keep going and see Okay, now we're going to the trilogy. <laughs> the Hunter. Flow. Seven of Pentacles. I'm getting your, you find what you're looking for. And we have the Rose Quartz, which can be about love here. I'm hearing gentleness, a ge gentle energy, gentle breeze, a gentle breeze. I'm like seeing someone go into someone's ear. Don't shamans do that? It's like a gentle breeze happening in your ear in the trilogy. So you get some guidance. You know what you're looking for here. You're move. You're you're in the flow. So before I go to the sequel, how do we, why is it a cycle? How do we get back to the prequel? Page of Cups again, this card. I'll show it to you. Maybe there's something in this image. 
Well, the Page of Cups is a really hopeful card. It's really sweet and innocent, can be. You know, we see the page coming forward with the first fish it ever ca caught, you know, in its cup and make and offering it to someone rather than keeping it for themselves. You know, it's, it's such a beautiful kind of selfless energy and excitement being proud and wanting to give something to someone but in this deck because of the nature of the deck well no there are non-skeletal skeletal things here the fish is a skeleton there's something about timing waiting too long here What in the, what in the world? <laughs> Something has been taking too long, guys. Do you like my pink big bird sweater? <laughs> okay. Maybe that's a message. There's a pink bird. Something has been taking too long. Now the page of cups could also be an apology. It could be a creative endeavor. It could be a will for new life. And then as the cycle, we go from the Page of Cups to the Queen of Cups. And here she is holding that same kind of skull with no fish in it. Just the water. So I feel like this this is a situation that you've been, you've had a, this similar cycle happen before. Okay, but it's only now you're realizing the illusion of something. Okay, let's see what the sequel is. This seems to be the big deal here, I guess, because it's the near future. The unseen. Sadness. Eight of Pentacles. See, it's like in the sequel, it's Eight of Pentacles. In the trilogy, you go back to seven. So as you move forward, you're going back at the same time. Which makes sense in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm seeing a loom here. So there's something about like weaving something, but having to go, I don't even know if that happens in a loom. I have no idea. But it's like you go back a stitch or you restitch something. I don't know. It's something like that. Like, you know what I mean, right? When you're weaving something or maybe it even happens in knitting. I don't know. You go forward, but you have to pick up the last part of it. And you go forward and you keep going back and forth, back, back and forward, making progress, but always having to return at the same time. Maybe we're talking about a healing journey for you. The sequel has the amethyst, which is about intuition, your third eye, Un with the unseen. Who, uh, who is sad? Who is sad here? The star, judgment, five of wands. I'm hearing a little too late. Something, somebody's miss, yeah, something's late on this timeline. I'm hearing um, some kind of announcer being like, tickets have been sold out or something like that. It, I don't know if that's exactly it, but it's like, I'm, it's like a, somebody announcing something almost like at a fair. Like there's, no, you can't go on the ride anymore. Or you can't, the show's been sold out. You can't get in to see it. And I don't think this is you. I think this is somebody else. I feel like somebody else's sadness is unseen in the future by you. Maybe because you're protected from it. Because you've been working so hard here to build something for yourself. And knowing their sadness would interfere with that. What this person's sadness is about is that something's healed a little too late. But... That's, you know, okay, I'm hearing boohoo, <laughs> seems so rough, but that's what I heard. Okay, so it's like, yeah, the, 
Yeah, and that's a little shadowy though. That's a little, yeah, that's not from your higher self. That's shadowy, like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's okay, you know, you have every right to feel what you feel. But there's something untrustworthy about this whole situation with the Seven of Swords and the Magician in this uh, illusionary box that you're in. So it's like somebody is late, but they want to make you think that... Uh, that the movie's been paused. They're not late. Things have just, it's just been an intermission or you've been on a break for a while. Why does the collective need to know this? What's the bigger message here? Like what, what do I need to say now? 10 of cups. I'm hearing, what are you going to do? Nine of Cups. Temperance. Wheel of Fortune. You know, Collective, I feel like in the past, well, let me get one card for each before I say that. Just want to confirm something here. Uh, tell me more about this abundance here. I feel like in the past, okay, you gave your time and energy to somebody or a situation that you're involved in. Um, because you wanted to find peace in this situation with the Ten of Cups. Maybe you were married. This has to do with a family or it could be your family, you know, without the marriage part. Whatever this is for you, because I'm, I'm seeing a whole bunch of bunnies here. <laughs> Whatever this is for you, you've, you, um, in previous cycles, I'm hearing, please be kind and rewind. Yeah, that's the, yeah, it's like you were kind in the past. You did rewind something and play it again. It's like you rewound the VHS. Yeah, I'm showing my age here. <laughs> you, ran the, you rewound the VHS, right? And you took it back to the store. And they were like, oh. Perfect. Now, when you rent it again, you can replay it, you know, or it's ready to be replayed, basically. Instead of just nine of cups, surrender and movement, instead of saying, okay, I watched that movie, I'm just going to take it back now. And, you know, spirit can do what it wants to do, aka the video store, you know, the movie store can do what it wants to do, rewind it or not. I don't need to be kind here. It's interesting. I feel like maybe this is a test here. Because Spirit has an automatic rewinder if, anyway, so if they want to rewind it, <laughs> it's no problem. Who's saying, please be kind and rewind? Four of Cups? Yeah, it's not, it's not Spirit asking you to rewind something. Some other counterpart in this situation who's also... You know, who's working with spirit on their own journey. Okay, who is this saying, please be kind and rewind? Three of Wands, Queen of Wands. Potentially a fire sign or someone who has a lot of far, f fire, Mars, Airy. Airy, okay, Aries in their chart. Airy, maybe they're an air sign as well. We had Vapid come out. Maybe they're a little Airy. Okay, Three of Wands, Queen of Wands. This is somebody, yeah, who sits there and waits for old stories to come back around. This is somebody who expects you to be ready to watch something again. Okay, and Spirit's saying surrender. Oh, when did death fall out? Yeah, surrender to... Do 
what your intuition surrender to your intuition here and what it's telling you the story has been transformed okay maybe you don't even need to take this video back maybe nobody else needs to watch it either it wasn't very good maybe i don't know or maybe it was really good but you don't need to watch it again and again and again and nobody else does either so you should just leave it something about surrendering it with movement and moving forward nine of cups and thinking about your own individual happiness being a little bit um self-concerned in this situation putting yourself first your own needs and tempering here your passion in a situation so tell me about how, how does collective fly? How does collective fly? Four of cups. Okay, there's that <laughs> clerk <laughs> at the video store. <laughs> okay, how does collective fly? Four of wands. I'm hearing stay home. Nine of Swords. Look at this Nine of Swords card. It's crazy, huh? Nine of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles. Well, that seems obvious, though. Isn't there something else? So far, I'm just seeing, well, spend some time facing your fears. Because once you do that, the shadow work, or you face your fears, whatever that is in relationship to this situation you're thinking of, you gain a new perspective and a new opportunity. I'm hearing Taurus here. Um, something about not letting the clerk in your house to rewind the tape for you, that's not a appropriate. Okay, so that's how you fly, but I feel like there's something more. Tell me, eight of wands, the tower, <laughs> yeah, the hangman, <laughs> page of swords. Uh -huh. It's like you're on the verge of having a new perspective, but you keep retracting. You keep recoiling a little bit. You're all over the timeline, not sure where you want to settle. There is an empty space where you can create anything right now, your own reality, a new movie, whatever, right? Yeah, there are no confines around you. Okay, you don't need to create anything that anybody else desires either. But it's like that new perspective you're about to have on something, it's going to be a huge revelation. It's going to feel uncomfortable. But it's coming at you whether you like it or not, okay? It's maybe coming out in your nightmares or in your anxieties, moments where you feel anxious. That... It, there's something here where you need to look deeper within to find out why it is that you're going back and forward, back and forward, and not just forward here. Yeah, there's a fear of seeing things as they actually are or as they actually should be, I'm hearing, as they should be. Oh boy. Um, I want to close this spirit. Can we close with something concrete, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Mm, let's see. Oh yeah, let's let's get one of these. Okay. Closing message here, spirit. Closing message. Pachamama. <laughs> Love that word. <laughs> okay, number 40. Pachamama. 
Pachamama represents the unconditional love that the earth has for all her children, including the stones, the plants, the animals, and humans. She is the goddess of earth, also known as Gaia, who pervades all creation in our planet. Our timeless soul can experience life in a biological body thanks to her. The joy and pain we taste during our brief time on earth are invita inv invitations to discover the boundless love of Pachamama. You still believe that you have been cast out of the Garden of Eden, that you are motherless and homeless. You suppose that you need to work very hard to survive or thrive. It is time to stop suffering. Let go of that old myth and realize that you were given the garden to rejoice in and to become its steward. Your melancholy is really a longing to return to the heart of Pachamama. Listen deeply to the mother who is always there for you. Walk in beauty and honor all life. All right, collective, that's what I got for you. Remember who you are and where you came from. I love you so much. I'll see you next time.